Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Cool Quotes Let's Play Dark Souls. In the last episode, we found our way to the secret bonfire, and in this one, we are going to finish up Sen's Fortress. Now, I didn't show you where the secret bonfire, how to get back from there into the rest of Sen's Fortress, but as you'll notice, you just drop down into an area we were already at, and we're pretty close to where the bonfire is. It's not that far away. Uh, so right now I'm going to take the opportunity to show you where those Balder Knights are that I mentioned last time. And I'm actually going to use the Covetous Gold Serpent Ring because I would like to get the Balder Shield. Uh, it is, you know, it's a medium shield, kind of like the, the one I'm using right now, so I can still parry with it. But it's got probably one of the best stabilities of any of the shields in its class and some pretty good resistances. So I definitely want to pick it up. Plus it looks badass. It's the shield that that knight is using right now. And there's only two places to get it. You can either get it off of Balder Knight by farming, which is what I'm doing right now with the Covetous Gold Serpent Ring, or you can buy it from the Forlorn Merchant, who is in Sen's Fortress, and you will see him later this episode. Now, the shield, I'm pretty sure, is like 10,000 souls, and I don't really want to spend 10,000 souls on it if I can help it. So I'm just going to try to take these guys out. But it is a pretty good shield, and every time I fight one of these Balder Knights, I'm going to try to remember to use... The, uh, the Covetous Gold Serpent Ring to give me some better chance chances of getting it. Uh, now this is kind of funny. Uh, I actually get a drop and I get three Balder items. None of which are the shield. So it's kind of frustrating. Uh, but this is a handy item right here and definitely worth picking up. The Flame Stone Plate Ring. Uh, it prevents fire damage or boosts fire defense. And there are a couple bosses later on uh, where they do use a lot of fire attacks and that becomes fairly useful. But for right now I am actually going to equip it for a different reason and that's those fire bombs that the giant throws down at you. If you do get hit by them they take off a lot of damage so boosting my fire defense right now is definitely in my best interest. Now when you finally get to this area just book it past all of these staircases and do not stop moving because this guy is going to try to track you down with his fire bombs and he can hit at basically every place in this area. Like, he'll throw it to any ledge. It's not, there's no place where that's like off limits to it. Uh, so the only way to really avoid it is to actually run around and just not stop moving. Now these two cages are the shortcut, but I can't open it yet because it's locked. Uh, unfortunately this is a key that, this is a lock the master key cannot open. However, you can get the cage key, uh, which is also used to free Big Hat Logan. And I'll show you where to get that soon, and that'll open that up. It serves as an elevator that brings you down to the beginning of Sen's Fortress and is your primary shortcut through this area if you want to get from Andre to the Forlorn Merchant, which will allow you to get large Titanite shards and use them to upgrade your weapons, so it's fairly useful. Now these, the golem that we're tr that's throwing the firebombs is right up here, and this is going to be a really good really good lesson in exactly what not to do when fighting him. Because this guy isn't really that hard as long as you don't do pretty much exactly what I end up doing, which is get hit in the face. Step one, don't stand in front of him when he's swinging. And you'll you hear him doing this little gasping, panting thing. After he does his little tantrum, he actually just stops moving for a long time, making it very easy to kill him. Uh, so anyway, step two, still don't stand in front of him like an idiot. I guess I didn't learn the first time. And then step three, do not go underneath him when he's about to use a, a stomp attack, because that is what happens. Yeah. So... And we're back after a little edit. And we're going to take on this asshole again. And basically, I decided, you know what, this Weehonda is a little, a little slow. I'm going to try out this Lightning Spear, which we got from the Mimic a little earlier in the last episode. So I run up the stairs here, and this is a little bit better. Um, I still do a bunch of stupid stuff, but not nearly as bad as last time. I don't die, as you can probably see. Uh, and this is what I'm talking about. After he does his little tantrum... He just stands there and lets you stab away at him. And at this point, I actually wish I did have this Wee Hunter because I probably could have taken him out if I had it. And I'm, you know, being retarded. I'm, I'm kicking him and stuff. Uh, but he's almost dead. And he doesn't have that much left in the tank here, to be honest. So I'm just, like, waiting him out a little bit. 
roll between his legs, you turn around and stab him and just kill this guy. And as you can see, much easier to run, didn't even have to heal. It's all about staying behind him and staying away from him when he's taking his tantrum and just using your opportunities to take this guy out. Not nearly as hard as I made it look in the first attempt at fighting him. But what can you do? Uh, I'm going to put this Weehander back on because it's, you know, I think it's a better weapon overall right now for me because I'm a strength character. And this door leads to the Iron Golem. Uh, we're not going to go in there yet. Uh, we will do a few more things in Sens before we face the boss. Uh, but just so you guys know, that is how you get to the boss room. Now what I'm doing here isn't probably that smart. Uh, I just barely make it. I, I didn't even think it was going to be that close. I thought I had plenty of room. But now that the uh, the firebomb golem is dead, we can easily take our time and make this jump. And when you come in here, you're going to find the forlorn merchant. And he is very forlorn. Ah, uh, what? What? Who? who, who? But I... Ah, you think I do? Yes, I, I remember that feeling. So... Anyway, he doesn't sell all that much, but he does sell some cool stuff. Uh, he sells the Green Blossom, which uh, gives you a stamina cut recovery boost. He also sells Large Titanite Shards and Green Titanite Shards. And those are very good. The Large Titanite Shards are like the, the, the 5 to 10 um, upgrades for the weapons. And... The other shards are uh, like for divine weapons, which we're going to need later at some point anyway. Uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't sell that much, but the stuff he does sell is pretty useful. So this is a place that you'll end up going uh, from him to Andre in order to make divine weapons and stuff like that. Uh, and that's why we're going to open the shortcut. Now at the very bottom of these stairs, there is a little bridge with one of those serpent enemies. He's not any harder than any of the other serpents. He's the same ones that we fought a million times. You're just going to be run around him and backstab him. Too easy. And pick up the item he is protecting, which is the cage key. And that is exactly what we need. Because that's going to open up the cage that serves as a shortcut. And if you haven't freed Big Hat Logan yet, you can proceed to do so. Uh, it's the same key. I don't know why that lock is open by the master key. Um but the shortcut is not even though they use the same key I don't know that doesn't make sense but that's the way it is you can free Big Hat Logan but you cannot you cannot open the shortcut it's it's crazy but it, it is what it is uh, so you can make this jump back over here again and you can actually run like kind of roll down off this one to where this platform is in order to get a cool item uh, make sure you're at full health. Takes good good amount of fall damage, but you get the sniper crossbow, which is one of the better crossbows in the game, and it's worth picking up at least. And I'll get another chance at these baller knights. And every time I see one of those, like you know, I see a soul drop, you know, an item drop. I'm like, holy crap! I just got the baller shield. And like every time, it isn't the baller shield, so it's disappointing. I should have just bought it for four thousand souls when I was up there. I actually thought it was more when I went to the merchant, and when I saw it was only four thousand. I guess I still have decided to stay with the strategy of farming, but I kind of regret it now. I should have just picked it up when I had the chance. And the other golem, there's, there's one more, the one that handles the boulders that you can actually see across the way when you're on that little, little ledge. You can jump over to him, but if you do and you kill him, he doesn't really drop anything except for souls. And he responds every time you hit a bonfire. Uh, and he doesn't, like, hurt you specifically. Like, all he does is do the uh, the boulder trap. So if you kill him, there's no boulders. But it doesn't really help you all that much. So I don't know. Uh, but I'm actually going to kindle this bonfire so I have uh, the ability to summon and ten Estes flasks for this next boss. You actually you definitely don't need to summon for this boss. He's pretty damn easy. Uh, definitely one of the one of the easier bosses in the game. Uh, but I just love the guy you summon, so I usually summon him anyway. Uh, he's just so cool. He has such a cool armor set and just looks like a badass. And even has a really cool name. Uh, so I'm gonna do that anyway. Plus ten Estus, I just I like to be safe. 
so I am going to kindle it. I'm a little humanity rich right now, uh, because I haven't really been using humanity, so I'm not afraid to use a couple. So anyway, we're going to go through this area for what seems like the 20th time, and I promise this is probably the last. <laughs> As you can see, that's not really the best promise. You know, I probably won't do it, I don't know. But I'm going to try to head to the boss now, so... We'll see what we'll see. You know, I can't see us going over the area again. I'll show you one more area on the way there, and it's completely useless, but it's just kind of cool to see. Um, you could head down this hallway here, and this one baller knight in extremely. See, I, I don't like that. That kind of like went almost right through his. Like it didn't hit him at all, even though I clearly hit him. Uh, so anyway. When he does that little stance thing, he'll actually parry you if you do a normal attack. Uh, but you can do a jump attack, and if you hit him, he won't be able to parry it. So that's like my strategy right now, and as you can see, it did it actually worked. Um, but Zuyander's no good in a card or like this. Too much of the attacks are like too large of a swing. But the jump attacks work fairly well, even even though uh, you have the big weapon. So as you can see, this basically there's nothing here, but like I guess a nice view. So there's not really much to see down here other than the baller knight. But uh, anyway, I'm going to open the shortcut and show you guys how to do it. So uh, you just use the cage key, you open it up, and you step in, and oh no, it's captured you! Uh, but no, not really. It just takes you down like an elevator. And I mean, it might seem a little crazy stepping in a cage, but that's what you just what you have to do. It lets you out on this bridge, which is the first bridge of the entire of the entire sense fortress. And then I'm just going to run back in so I can go back up. But uh, that's how you get in and out. You, you basically are at the beginning of Sense Fortress. You, you run in the cage and then you, it takes you to the top. And uh, the shortcut's still open because as you can see, now that I raised that one back up, the other one went down. So there's always one uh, elevator at the bottom at all times. So now we'll run along here and take out that annoying crossbowman again. Uh, he's pretty easy, but it's just... He, like he's just there, just to annoy you. You're on this little skinny ledge, and it's like, oh, okay, now we're gonna like shoot you with the crossbow. So it's very, it, it feels good, it feels good, man, to get a backstab on there. And now I'm gonna show you the summon, and it is over here in another room that means absolutely nothing. It's just there for the summon sign, and it's Iron Tarkus. I think that's a really cool name, and this guy just looks really cool. And I just get invaded by Dark Spirit and Darg. Uh, but I think he got a little afraid of Iron Tarkus because you're gonna you're gonna see in a second. He just he sees Phantom Iron Tarkus summon, and he's just like, "Okay, I'm fucking out of here, dude." He's got Iron Tarkus. <laughs> I don't know, uh, but anyway, I'm gonna show you one more area before we hit the boss because I forgot to do it earlier. Uh, this is actually taken after the boss fight. But, um, we'll go back to the boss in a second. I just want to show you how to do this. Basically, there is a little mini tower knight over here. And he won't attack you until you get close. And you can bait his attacks like I just did. Uh, but don't do what I'm about to do and try to bait it and then just get in the way. Because you will get hit in the face. The guy hits like a beast. Uh, but it's fairly easy to fireball this guy to death. He just kind of stands in it, takes the extra damage too, uh, and he actually doesn't really go like any farther than that. He will like literally start walking backwards into the hallway and like walk away. Like he won't go any further. So he actually has an aggro range, but you can just stand there and just keep aggroing him, and then he comes up to the top and then starts walking away. Uh, you can also get behind him. You can't backstab him, but you can't hit him like that. And once you take this guy out, there's a couple of items that he's protecting on this little path that you can get. And a couple of which are fairly, fairly useful, and one of which doesn't really seem to have any use at all. Um, so anyway, you, you head down this little ladder here. And you head across a skinny bridge to a tower that you won't be able to access any other way, but the way we're going right now. And you just get ambushed by this guy. And oh my god, he looks just like me. Yeah, he's got the elite knight armor on. This is Ricard. And luckily for you, his 
shield is horrible. So you can hit right through it. Uh, he's also got this really cool weapon that you're going to pick up right now called Ricard's Rapier. It is one of the better scaling dexterity weapons, and it's, you know, the animations on it are pretty cool. If you upgrade it, it's pretty awesome, so I recommend it. And uh, then there's two chests up here, and they are real. No mimics. You open them up, rearing a sacrifice, which is useful because it keeps all your souls, humanity, and everything else, and divine blessing, which I haven't really found too much of a use for. Uh, basically, it just heals you to full and it takes away all your status ailments. And that seems really cool, but it suffers from the curse that I call the do not use curse. Like, because you don't want to waste something because it's so useful. That's just an item that you'll end up never using. Alright, so anyway, I'm going to prep a little bit for the Iron Golem by taking out my uh, charcoal pine resin. And I'm pretty sure that's all I really need to fight this guy. I mean, I don't really even need that. I just kind of want to use it. Now, the Iron Golem doesn't really do much. You approach him, and the same rules apply for this guy as do the other golem we, we faced um, up top of the tower through the firebomb. Just make sure you stay behind the guy and try to attack his feet. Um, this guy is one of the easier bosses in the game because he's very slow. Uh, he, if you're in front of him, he will pick you up like he just did to Iron Tarkus there. And as you can see, that guy is just a tank. He just got picked up and thrown to the ground by this iron golem. And he barely even has a scratch. But yeah, as you can see, even then I was in front of the Iron Golem. And, you know, it, I still was able to roll out of the way. Now, right now, you're actually going to see him stagger. And I believe it's right, yeah, right now. And I was actually out of stamina, which sucked. But if I wasn't, uh, you can hit this guy enough times when he staggered that he'll actually fall over. And if he did that at the edge here, he would have fallen right off and died instantly. Uh, but unfortunately it wasn't to be. But as he staggered, he doesn't attack you, so you have plenty of time to do damage to the guy. And Iron Tarkus, as you can see, is doing good damage to this guy too. Every time he hits him, he's like doing more damage than I am, even with my charcoal pine resin. Right, but yeah, this is pretty much the end of it for him. I think Iron Tarkus actually got the last hit. And that's it. That's the Iron Golem. Uh, and as you can see, not really that hard to kill. And that's pretty much it for this episode. Uh, next episode, we are going to take care of a few things that we didn't take care of uh, before. And then after that, we will proceed into Anor Londo and take on some of the tougher parts of the game. So I'll see you guys later.